Beware of Falling Babies One spring day in 1937, the lives of a street sweeper named Joseph Figlock and a one-year-old baby were brought together in a most unusual way. As Figlock was walked accepted to a selective college or unexpectedly won an athletic event, but beating the odds is never quite as exhilarating an experience as when the odds are against your survival. Tammy Oldham Ashcraft knows this feeling. At the age of 23, while she was sailing the South Pacific, Ashcraft was caught in a violent hurricane. The 50-foot, 15-meter waves overturned her boat. Ashcraft, who was below deck, was knocked unconscious. When she awoke 27 hours later, the boat had turned right side up again, but the storm had been so violent that the sails were destroyed, the motor was dead, and the radio was lost. Only the rudder, which steers the ship, was intact. Ashcraft was badly injured and disoriented. Determined to survive, Ashcraft created a sail from scraps of material and charted a path to Hawaii, which was 1,500 miles, 2,400 kilometers away. Traveling only two miles an hour, Ashcraft reached her destination 41 days later. Having lost 40 pounds, 18 kilograms, during her ordeal, Ashcraft was thin and haggard when she arrived. However, she was happy and grateful to have beaten the odds. Ashcraft, who still sails, eventually told her tale of survival in a book called Red Sky in Morning. Another such tale of survival against the odds can be told by Eric Lamarck, a hockey player who played with the French National Olympic team during the 1994 Olympics. One day in February 2004, Lamarck set out for a day of snowboarding in California's Sierra Nevada mountains. But by the end of the day, Lamarck found himself in a life or death situation. While looking for a good place to snowboard, Lamarck lost his way and ended up in the wilderness at the back of the mountain. Lamarck, who had expected to just be out for a couple of hours, had no food, very few supplies, and his cell phone battery was dead. All he had was a seemingly useless pocket radio. Once he realized he was lost, he decided to keep moving. Unfortunately, he chose the wrong direction and over the next few days moved farther and farther away from safety and rescue. Knowing that eating snow lowers body temperature, Lamarck ate only tree bark and pine seeds. After a few days, Lamarck had an idea that may have saved his life. He turned the pocket radio into a kind of compass. He noticed that whenever he pointed the radio in a certain direction, the reception for a local radio station grew stronger. Using this radio reception as a guide, Lamarck switched direction and started walking towards safety and ultimately rescue. For days, Lamarck struggled through hunger, freezing temperatures, and 12-foot, 4-meter deep snow. By the eighth day, Lamarck was so weak and his legs were so frostbitten that he could no longer walk or even stand. He was in such bad condition that he began hallucinating that his situation was just a video game. He recalls thinking, the game is over, let's reset it, I give up. Lamarck was at the point of exhaustion and death when he was found by rescuers in a helicopter. Although he lost his legs to frostbite, Lamarck's survival experience left him with more of an appetite for life than ever before. After being fitted with artificial limbs, he vowed to go snowboarding again. Only in the future, he plans to be much better prepared. Occasionally, some owe their survival not to struggle, but to nature. Take the startling case of Mitsutaka Uchikoshi. 
One ice-cold October day in 2006, Uchi Koshi had been with a group on a mountain in western Japan. After wandering off into a field on his own, Uchi Koshi tripped, hit his head, and was knocked unconscious. As Uchi Koshi remembers, I was in a field and I felt very comfortable. That's my last memory. He remained unconscious in almost freezing temperatures without food or water for more than three weeks. When he was found in the freezing field 24 days after his fall, he did not seem to be breathing and had no detectable pulse. His body temperature was nearly 30 degrees below normal, and his organs had nearly shut down. Doctors assumed he was dead. Yet something incredible happened while he was at Kobe City General Hospital. He woke up. Even more incredibly, Uchi Koshi, who was treated for severe hypothermia and blood loss, made a full recovery. Doctors believe that Uchi Koshi's body went into a state similar to hibernation. In hibernation, the body temperature of an animal is lowered and its breathing and heart rate slow down. Hibernation reduces the need for food and protects animals from damage to the brain and other organs. Stories like these remind us that even when we are in a situation that seems impossible, we should never give up hope. After all, there is always a chance that you will succeed against the odds. Caught in a heat wave without electricity. A heat wave is a period of excessively hot weather accompanied by high humidity. A heat wave is relative to the usual weather of an area. In other words, what people from hotter climates consider normal might be termed as a heat wave in cooler areas. Severe heat waves can cause crop failure, countless deaths from hyperthermia, as well as shortage of water and power failure due to excessive use of air conditioning. Densely populated urban areas are more susceptible to heat waves due to inadequate ventilation, retention of heat by tall buildings, and inadequate nighttime cooling. City dwellers rely heavily on air conditioning during the summer months to function normally and avoid potentially fatal heat strokes. What should one do in the city during a heat wave with no air conditioning because of a power failure? Here are some tips. Find the coolest place in your home. This could be in a darker corner, on the floor, under a bed, or even in a closet with a protected wall at the back that has remained relatively cool. Make sure you do not shut yourself in. Reduce movement to a minimum. Preserve your ice cubes as long as possible. Ration them. Do not use them all at once. Use them sparingly to keep your face, neck, and inner arms wet and cool. Drink plenty of water to avoid dehydration and have frequent cool showers. Keep a bowl with cool water and a towel or sponge by you to wipe your face, your neck, and arms as often as possible to keep them cool. You might also use a wet towel around your neck or over your head to keep your body temperature down. Use a traditional fan or a piece of cardboard to fan yourself. Refrain from eating rich foods, e.g. fried fatty food and meat. Have lighter meals with plenty of vegetables and fruit. When you sit, put your feet in a bowl filled with cool water. Hose down the walls and open areas of your home, preferably after sundown, to increase night cooling. Hose down the walls, trees, bushes, and ground around your house as a fire precaution. And whatever you do, stay out of the sun. If you must go out, wear a wide-brimmed hat and sunglasses, or carry an umbrella. Cool weather will eventually come.
doesn't it always?